I'm going to turn with me to 2 Timothy this morning, 2 Timothy chapter 3, 2 Timothy chapter 3. <coughs> Today is our last study, as I'll mention a little later in the sermon, it's our last study into Back to Basics, and uh, God willing in the next <coughs> a few weeks we'll be picking up on a brand new series, so um, do pray for me, I have a number of suggestions that have come forward. Uh, so it's just a case of deciding before the Lord went which way to go. So we've got, we've got a new series coming up, and uh, let's see what God says. But today is 2 Timothy chapter 3, looking at verse 16. The Apostle writes about the Word of God, All Scripture is God-breathed, and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Let's come to prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father God, we do praise and thank you for being able to gather together this morning, Lord, to study your word. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit very powerfully upon us. And uh, Lord, may you do the speaking, may your name be exalted, may your name be glorified. You are indeed a glorious God. And uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of being able to gather together here, um, Lord, especially under this very difficult time in which we are living in our country. But Heavenly Father, may your Holy Spirit move among us. May your Holy Spirit move up and down the aisle and amongst the pews. May your Holy Spirit speak through myself and speak into my heart and impress these truths upon my life. But may you speak into all of our hearts, impressing these truths upon us and help us to leave here this morning changed people, people seeking to glorify you with all our hearts, all our minds, and all our souls. And Lord, one of these days may we indeed hear those coveted words, well done, good and faithful servants, enter into the joy of your Lord. Lord, we commit all things to you for Jesus' sake, to your glory. And God's people say, Amen. Well, we come to our last message in our series, Back to Basics, this morning. And I've gone and entitled our study, How to Live to Glorify and Exalt God. How to Live to Glorify and Exalt God. And this morning's message is really a summary of two main points that we've gone and looked at in this study. Two main points. Just to reinforce them for you, really, from a completely different angle. And I pray it proves a blessing and a good reminder and an encouragement in your own walk with God. But even so today, how do we live to glorify and exalt God? How do we live to glorify and exalt God? And I believe that this is really one of the most important questions to ask, and it was originally the motivation to start the study in Back to Basics. But even so, in answer to this question, you might turn around and you might say, well, Mark, we glorify and exalt God by doing everything in our lives to honor Him. Everything. We glorify God by acknowledging Jesus' Lordship over life itself. We glorify God by our faith. We glorify God by our obedience. We glorify God by sacrifice in our lives and so on. And those things are true and they are right. And we spent the last couple of months studying into these issues together. And so a lot of these issues should be very, very familiar to you and I and many, many more. But there are two, and I believe that we need to keep this right at the very center because they really encapsulate everything else to glorify and honor and exalt God. And more specifically, uh, to help you and I test the standard of our lives as we draw this series to a close. And by the way, every single one of us who names Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior ought to be testing our, uh, and examining our Christian walk with God. On a daily basis. That is a command of scripture to us. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5. He says to us, Examine yourselves as a Christian to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. 
Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you unless, of course, you fail the test? And so I wonder, as you live for Jesus Christ, are you somebody here today who is continually testing the standard of your own Christian faith before God and your own Christian walk before God? And in doing so, could your Christian life be described as God-centered, God-honoring, God-driven? What is your spiritual growth like before Jesus Christ as you sit before His throne this morning? Are you somebody who is growing spiritually before God as you should be? Are you becoming more and more daily like Jesus Christ? In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, if you look, the Apostle Peter writes on this. He says, but grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. To Him be glory. Grow in grace. Grow in grace. In 1 Peter 2.2, 2, Peter wrote further. He says, like newborn babes, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may what? Grow up in your salvation as a Christian. And so spiritual growth and the examination of our lives is something that is commanded by God for you and I individually. In Ephesians chapter 4 verse 14, the Apostle Paul says that we are to be henceforth no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. In other words, he says, we're to grow spiritually. We are to grow spiritually. We're to mature. We're to progress in our Christianity. So that as you stand back and you look at your life, yesterday should be one thing for God spiritually. Today should be something else. And tomorrow should be yet something altogether new. And that there should be an abiding feeling deep down rooted in our hearts for all of us. That if in a day we do not at least grow a little bit spiritually for God and make a stand for God, that day for you and I is an utter loss. And that there ought to be in all of our lives a desire for something, some element of spiritual progress. We should be desiring to grow closer. It should be a burning desire within us. All as we live with one abiding goal, to exalt and glorify God, to exalt and glorify God, to exalt and glorify God. You know, friends, if God called us home tonight, or sometime towards the end of the week, or even next week, because of perhaps this virus, this will be the most important aspect of our life, to exalt and to have glorified God. The sad reality is, though, is that we so often tell ourselves that it's just not possible to live this way. That it's not possible to think about God in absolutely every situation we are facing. Life's too hectic. Life's too busy. That it's not possible to uphold God's grace in absolutely everything. That it's not possible to show Jesus in our lives in every situation. You've got somebody difficult at the office, they're creating your, creating your life to be an absolute misery. It's not easy to show Jesus Christ in that situation. But the truth is, if we are not living in such a way where we seek to uphold Christ in every part of our lives, then who are we living for? Who are we living for? That's a challenge, isn't it? And so the question is, how do we spiritually live to glorify God? How do we spiritually live to glorify God? Well, there are, two, there are many areas and many ways as we have gone and studied. But let's summarize and close with just two this morning. And that is firstly, we live to glorify Almighty God when we proclaim His Word. When we proclaim His Word. And I pray that this really proves to be an absolute encouragement to you because we are living in an entertainment orientated society today, aren't we? Where a myriad of different things are constantly competing with our time to focus on the Bible. So much so that when Christians do find time to read, very often they spend more time reading uh, all kinds of other books than reading the Bible. In fact, this morning, if you would go into an average Christian bookshop, you will find that fiction, personal experience, stories, self-help manuals often outnumber, very often, books explaining the Bible themselves. 
Now, yes, uh, so, some of those books may be very, very helpful. Some have been written by extremely godly people. And no doubt God uses the information that they have gone and put down on the page under the Holy Spirit to at times help you and I to grow spiritually in our lives. But no matter how helpful they may actually be, there is no substitute for you and I taking time before the throne of God in heaven and studying the Word of God on a personal basis for yours and my own life. In fact, I'll go as far as to say to you that if you do not study the Word of God as you should, any form of spiritual growth or holiness in your own individual life is something that will be stunted. For studying God's Word is absolutely vital if we are to stand up and proclaim God's Word. And I'm going to touch on this again later in the message. In that, a Christ, in that a Christian grows spiritually when they take in the Word of God into their hearts, into their souls, just like a baby takes in milk. Milk. A graphic illustration of this principle is found for us in Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 16, where the prophet Jeremiah says, When your words came, I ate them. They were my joy, and they were my heart's delight. In other words, says Jeremiah, as I took your word into my life, God, it brought me joy. It brought me excitement. It brought me pleasure, great joy. The Apostle Paul was a man who understood how important it is for believers to feed daily on the word of God. He wrote to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. He said, brothers, I could not address you as spiritual, but as worldly. Mere infants in Jesus Christ, babies. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not yet ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. Or that is, Paul went and gave the Corinthian church, the Corinthian believers, milk in the way he taught the Bible, not solid food in his teaching, because they were so immature spiritually before the throne of God in heaven. But nevertheless, he fed them what? The Word of God. The Word of God. And why? Well, because Christians grow and are built up not by feelings, not by spiritual experiences, not by emotions, but by taking in of solid Scripture. Now, do you know that growth in our understanding of the Bible is basic to our usefulness in the sight of God? You want to be useful to God? You need to be growing. And do you know why? Well, because when we take it in and understand what we are taking in, we begin to then proclaim what we are taking in, and it gives God glory. It gives God glory. Turn with me to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1. Look at what Paul writes there. He says, Finally, brothers. I really like that. It's a typical preacher. Finally, brothers. And then he goes on to talk for another 18 verses. But even so, he says, finally, brothers, pray for us. Pray for us. What are they praying for? That the message of the Lord may spread rapidly and be honored, just as it was with you. Wow. Isn't that great? That the word of the Lord is to spread rapidly. That was the desire of God's servant. Why? Well, because God's word is really the expression of God, see? God's word is the expression of God. In fact, in the New Testament it states that the living word is Jesus, Hebrews chapter 1. Or that is God's word is synonymous with God's person, and therefore our God, our God, is one who is always glorified when his word is proclaimed by his people. Do you see the point? For example, in Galatians chapter 1 verse 22, we read this regarding the Apostle Paul and his con conversion and his subsequent ministry. Paul says this, listen, <coughs> I was personally unknown to the churches of Judea that are in Christ. They only heard the report, the man who had formerly persecuted us is now preaching the faith he once tried to go out and destroy that is to say that the Christian churches in Judea came to hear, friends, that the Apostle Paul, who had been persecuting Christians, was now standing up and preaching the Christian faith. And do you know what they did? Look at verse 24, end of the verse, or the beginning of the verse, rather. And they praised, glorified God because of me, says Paul. They glorified God. 
Now, why did they glorify God? Why did the Christian church turn around and exalt the name of God? Well, because the word of God was being preached to other people, do you see? The word was being proclaimed. God's word was being, God, because of the word, was being glorified. He was being exalted. Now, do you know, folk, that every time you stand up somewhere and you proclaim the word of God to others, you glorify God. Do you know that every time you speak to somebody about Jesus Christ, Every time you proclaim to the world that you are a Christian and speak about Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior and the oneness of God's incredible grace to you, you glorify God and you exalt Him in your love. And heaven acknowledges that. And why? Well, because when you do that, it's then that you're acknowledging that this is the truth. It is then that you are personally upholding the word of God before an entire world, acknowledging that it is a life-giving word, a life-changing word that was so important to God that He sent His only begotten Son for you and I individually. When you proclaim God's word as the absolute source of truth, it is then that you are honouring and glorifying God, upholding it as a standard to live by and follow something that God Himself also turns and says to this world. In fact, in Acts chapter 13 verse 48 it says this, When the Gentiles heard this, they were glad, and what? Honoured the word of the Lord, and all who were appointed to eternal life believed. The what? Word of the Lord spread rapidly through the whole region. Wow. And here again, the Christians exalted God in proclaiming to others His Word. Wow. Now friends, this is all very basic, and I don't want to go over points that we've already gone and studied over the last couple of months in the series. But I need to say at this particular point, that there is no spiritual growth in the area of proclaiming God's Word without taking in God's Word. That's the way to proclaim it, do you see? And this is an area that we need to turn and examine our own lives on today. In that one cannot grow physically without food, right? You can't do so. For example, you don't go home on a Sunday and sit down to some lovely Sunday lunch perhaps and say, you know Lord, that was really a wonderful Sunday lunch. And I just thank you Lord for what I've eaten, I thank you for it all. Lord, may it really just sustain me until next Sunday lunch. Amen. You don't say that. That's ridiculous. Instead, we eat every single day. And it's no different with spiritual things. In that one does not go, uh, to go to church on a Sunday, sit down and listen to a message and say, You know, Lord, that was really just a fantastic message. I thank you, Lord, for how it's impacted my life and got me thinking. Lord, may it just hang in there until next Sunday service. No. Instead, we, one needs to feed daily on God's Word. You need to read the Word of God every single day. You need to take Scripture and open to the Psalms, for example, and read a Psalm, but as you read it, pray through that Psalm to God. You need to seek when Bible studies are allowed to go to a Bible study, or as one feeds, and then you seek to give it out. For it, is, for it is when you turn and you proclaim the word, speaking out about Jesus Christ, telling others where you stand personally and what you actually believe, it is then that the word of God starts to cement itself deep down in your own soul. Wow. I like that little statement which says, the more you give away, the more you keep. Right? And I found that for myself as a Bible teacher, in that I found that the things that I teach you are the things that I remember. The things that I read and I never share with anyone else, I tend to forget very quickly. And so God is glorified by the proclamation of His Word. And to grow spiritually, God's Word should be constantly in our thoughts and in our minds and in our mouths. Do you remember what God said to the people of Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6? He said this, 
These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands. Bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Wow. Then it says, God, my words should literally be filling your entire heart and your entire mind on a continual basis. So that when, when you stand up to speak, my word flows out of your mouth. A man called Trumbull, Trumbull, was a great soul winner for God many, many years ago. He's with the Lord now. But in his book, How Jesus Won Men, he said this, that the one thing that made a difference in his life, and in fact totally turned his life around, was when he made a vow to God. And this was his vow. He said, God, giving me the strength every time I introduce a topic of conversation, I will always introduce it concerning Jesus. God giving me the strength every time I bring up a topic of conversation, I will always speak about Jesus. What a man. What a man. And you know, he kept that vow all his life to God. He never regressed. Every single time he opened his mouth, conversation about Jesus or something spiritual came out. He saturated his conversation with it. He saturated his relationships with it. I know for myself that even though I'm studying the Word of God every day over many, many years, and even though I have other hobbies and interests, the whole power base behind my mind is really the Word of God. It's what's important to me. It's what drives me. I've got no other purpose in life. And so I constantly seek to fill my mind with the Word. And so I carry a little Bible around with me, in large print, but a little Bible. And I read it and I study it wherever I am. Even when I'm walking through a mall, I'll be going over a verse of Scripture on a continual basis. Now, I've got a long way to go. I'm not perfect, and many of you know that. I'm full of my own failings. But we should all be learning the Word of God as Christians. It should be the goal of our lives. It should be something that is center focus for every one of us. We're doing it together for the glory of God. For remember, out of the overflow of your heart, your mouth speaks. Out of the overflow of your heart, your mouth speaks. God's Word has got to control you. Or think of it this way. How can you and I today stand up and tell others about Jesus Christ, the Christ who made you whole? How can you talk about a brand new life in Jesus and what it means to have a new life if it's not part of your heart? Our lives need to flow out of our hearts and our hearts are reflected in our speech. Dr. John MacArthur makes this interesting comment. He says, If Balaam's donkey could speak the word of God and glorify God, if evil, wicked, rotten Caiaphas, the high priest, could spoke the word of God and it happened, then how much more should you and I, for God, being, speak the word of God and glorify God as his people? End of quote. Now what he's saying there is that you and I will not grow spiritually unless we stand up and we speak the word of God. You and I will never truly glorify God unless we proclaim the word of God from our hearts. Let me give you another thought as we glorify God. And that is we bring glory to God by bringing others to Him. By bringing others to Him. And surely this would be a natural result of standing up and proclaiming the word of God from our own hearts. We understand it, we're taking it in, it's got to have an, out, an outlet, and we're constantly speaking to others about Christ. Now I'm only going to spend a very, very short time on this as we draw to a close. But turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Paul is one there who is writing to the Corinthian church and is deeply concerned uh, about the Corinthians. In fact, in chapters 1 to 3 of 2 Corinthians, he went and rebuked them very harshly at times because of their bad behavior as a group of Christians. And then in chapter 4, we find that Paul is one who then seeks to explain to them why he went and talked the way he did as a minister. And so he lists all the things that has gone and happened to him personally in his own ministry. Look at verse 8, chapter 4, he says this. We are hard-pressed on every side, 
perplexed but not in despair, persecuted, struck down but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may be revealed in our body. Wow. What a picture of Paul's ministry. One of continuous hardship and difficulty. And why did Paul face it? Look at verse 15. All this is for what? Your benefit, Christians. So that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Do you see that? And that Paul is saying here that all that he faced, he faced it all for the people of God. He faced it for God's church, you, all of it. That's why he allowed himself to be hard-pressed, verse 8. To be perplexed, verse 8. To be struck down, verse 9. Also that, verse 15, God's grace, that is salvation, may reach more and more people. And why? Well, look at verse 15. If you look, he says, end of the verse, to cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory or the exaltation of God. Wow. You see, when we win somebody to Jesus Christ, we bring somebody else into homage, into worship to Jesus, and that brings God glory. When we go out of our way to invite somebody to church, or perhaps even go and pick them up on a Sunday morning, and we bring them, we bring glory to God. For we bring them under the teaching of God's Word. And we uplift the name of our Creator and the work that Jesus Christ did on the cross. And that exalts God. Think about it. It glorifies God. Wow. As we close, I'd like to ask you just some final thoughts. Is God's Word rooted daily in your heart? Is God's Word rooted daily in your heart? And if it is, are you a proclaimer? And therefore, reaching out to others for the kingdom of heaven. Because to do so, it glorifies God. It glorifies God. Let's go to pray. Perhaps this morning the Lord has spoken into your heart. Maybe the Lord's spoken over this entire series on Back to Basics. Maybe you know that your Bible reading has faltered. You're tired and weary. It's cold in the evenings to read the scriptures. There's always something, perhaps. I want you to speak to the Lord and commit yourself to not give up on Scripture. No matter the difficulties, no matter any lockdowns, that we do not give up reading the Word of God every day. Perhaps you'd like to just commit yourself to in taking God's word in to also release that word. For if ever there is a time in world history where people are needing spiritual guidance and encouragement, it's perhaps now. Won't you just commit yourself to tell others about the Christ you made you of? Instead of a Bible in your office that people can take. Or trains. Gracious and eternal God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for what your word means to us as a people. May we be found faithful. Heavenly Father, where we have slipped perhaps in our walk with you and that we're not reading the scriptures daily as we should, help us to start to read the scriptures. Help us to make a determined effort. Heavenly Father, help us to also be proclaimers. For we know that we cannot take your word in as a sponge, but there must be a release valve. We need to be letting your word out. And Lord, we know that in this time of world crisis and country crisis, 
If there ever is a time that people need to come under the word because their eternities depend on it, it's now. Even our friends, even our family need to be encouraged. Help us to be proclaimers. Help us to not give up, but help us to speak the word with great power. And in everything, seek to glorify and honor you. May your name be glorified, be the center flashing point of our minds in every conversation, in every action, for Jesus' sake, to your glory. And God's people say, Amen. Amen. Let's turn and worship the Lord.